Welcome back. So now we're finally ready to actually develop the Kalman filter, the optimal full state estimator, if our system is obser uh, observable. So if I have a linear system and the A and C matrices are observable, meaning this uh, observability matrix has rank N and spans the state space, then we can develop an optimal full state estimator that we can then combine with our full state feedback controller. And so I'm going to draw the schematic of this, and then we're going to figure out what the system should look like. So the schematic of our, I'm going to call this my estimator. Um, and I'm not even going to call it a Kalman filter until we optimize it, because the Kalman filter is an optimal estimator. This is an estimator of the full state. According to this diagram down here, what we're going to do, the output, is going to be x hat, the full state, an estimate of the full state. And the inputs to this thing are my control inputs u and my measurements y. So I measure the system and I'm trying to back out x. But in addition, I have to know how I'm kicking the system so I can disambiguate that effect of the input. So the inputs of my full state estimator are u and y, and the output is x hat. Okay, and I'm going to write down what the system is, and then we're going to figure out how to optimize it, uh, given that there might be some disturbances and noise in the system. Okay, so first things first, I'm just going to write down the system um, of this estimator. This is itself a dynamical system, a linear dynamical system. So I'm going to say that this x hat state, ddt of x hat, and I'm just going to write this down, ddt of x hat is going to equal a of x hat, okay? Uh, and then the inputs, I've got this u and y. So I'm going to have plus b u and plus, remember how I had that gain matrix for my LQR? I'm also going to have a gain matrix for my filter or my estimator. So k sub f for Kalman filter. I'm going to have some constant matrix k and I'm also going to find this using the solution to a Riccati equation, times y minus y hat. Okay, and you might ask, what is y hat? Well, y hat is just this output equation on x hat instead of on x. So it's just equal to c times x hat. Okay, so this has not been motivated yet. I'm just writing this down. So it looks a lot like the dynamical system for x, so the dynamical system for x hat looks a lot like the dynamical system for x, except every time I get a new measurement, I'm going to compare it to what I think that measurement should be, and then if I have a difference here, I'm going to correct my full state. So this is essentially uh, an update based on new measurements, on new data y. Okay, so as I get new measurements in y, this is going to correct my full state estimate of x hat. Okay, and so I want to work this out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to plug it into here and we're going to see what ddt of x hat really equals. Okay, so let's just do this. ddt of x hat equals, what does it equal? Well, a times x hat plus b times u plus kfy minus kfy hat, but y hat is c times x hat. So minus kfc times x hat. Okay, now this is super cool. What we're going to have here is I'm going to move this over and I'm going to get this equals a minus kfc times x hat. So this should look a lot like the um, full state feedback equation, right? I'm going to try to change the eigenvalues of this by choosing my filter gains. Plus, now I'm going to write this in the following way. I'm going to say that this is b kf times u y. 
Okay, so these are kind of like the inputs to my full state estimator. U and Y are the inputs to my estimator. So this is my input matrix, kind of my new B matrix for this system. And this is the dynamics. These are the dynamics of X hat. And what we want to do is we want to make these dynamics stable. And I'm going to show you in a minute that if these dynamics are stable, then X hat will stably converge to X. Okay, very cool. And this should start looking a lot like the LQR full state feedback problem. If A and C are observable now, then with an appropriate choice of K, this Kalman filter gain matrix, I can place the eigenvalues of this anywhere I want, and there will be an optimal choice. Okay, so that's where we're going. Okay, let me now show you how you would actually um, compute the error of this. It's a little bit messy, but I think we can do it. Okay, so let's define an error. Epsilon equals, what does epsilon equal? It equals my full state x minus x hat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute DDT of epsilon and I'm going to show that it has these dynamics. I want epsilon to go to zero. So if I choose these to have stable dynamics, epsilon goes to zero. Okay, this is a little bit involved. Let's go through it, okay? Um, and I'm going to carve out a little bit of space here. Hopefully it's enough. So DDT of epsilon equals uh, DDT of X minus DDT of X hat. Okay, what's DDT of X? Well, it's just this stuff. So that equals AX plus BU minus all of this stuff, right? So minus AX hat plus KFCX hat minus KFY plus uh, minus BU. Okay? So right off the bat, a couple things happen. So right off the bat, my BUs cancel. That's pretty great. Okay? And now I have an AX and an AX hat, and I have a KFC X hat and a KFY. Okay, and so this is, um, okay, great. So we're getting super close. So we have four terms left. This term, this term, this term, and this term for epsilon dot, my error dot. So let's now say that Y equals C times X. Okay, so now I have A, times x minus x hat, a times x minus x hat, plus k f y equals c x, so I have c times um, x hat minus x. Okay, I'm just taking these four terms, I plugged in c x here, and this is what I get. So now let's flip the sign of this, okay, and make this um, let's make this x minus x hat and put our negative sign here. And now, lo and behold, what we have is DDT of epsilon equals A minus KFC times x minus x hat. What's x minus x hat? It's epsilon. Okay, so what does this tell us? This tells us that this error between my full state my true full state and my estimated full state can be made stable and go to zero if my system's observable. So remember, if observable, if OBSV, then I can make this as stable as I want. Then I can place the eggs by choosing KF. And I mean, I could actually literally use the LQR command if I wanted to, or the place command, 
uh, with A and C transpose. And I could define this gain, I could de uh, d determine this gain matrix for a given set of eigenvalues that I want this to have. But the upshot is, if my system's observable, I can build this dynamical system with the inputs U and Y that will stably converge to the full state of the system. Right? I can make this epsilon go to zero by making these eigenvalues stable. Okay? So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to see, well, again, why would I not want this to be as stable as possible and move my eigenvalues as far into the left half plane as possible? Well, in reality, I have measurement noise. I'm going to have plus noise. Um, maybe n is a bad variable. Let's call this, um, sometimes I call this w sub n. These are some measurement noise. And maybe up here, it's really plus some disturbance to my state. Okay, so maybe I have, um, I have some additive wn that gets added to my measurement. And maybe my system actually has some disturbance. So my system is getting kicked. I have measurement noise. And so we're going to figure out what is the optimal KF, the optimal Kalman filter gains to find the optimal eigenvalues of this system given some knowledge about the magnitude of disturbances and the magnitude of sensor noise. And that's how Kalman filters are going to be developed. Okay, thank you.